There's a heartbeat Louder than thunder Revolution Is in the air There's a heartbeat Deep inside our mother Are you too cool to care? Alaska is brought to you in part by Coca-Cola. By Cook Inlet Region Incorporated, an Alaska Native Corporation promoting economic and social progress for people throughout the state. By the generous support of the Alaska Native Health Board. By the Alaska Commercial Company, Alaska's leading retailer of food, family apparel, and general Alaska merchandise since 1867. Hello and welcome to Heartbeat Alaska. I'm Jeannie Green bringing you native news from way up north. I'd like to say hello again to all our viewers, whether you're in Pablo, Montana, on the Flathead Indian Reservation, or whether you're watching in the Russian Far East, we welcome you to our program, and thank you for tuning in and sharing all the native cultures from across the world. Isn't this great? On today's program, we travel to the state of Washington, where Roy Big Crane provided SKC-TV with video of a powwow, and they in turn sent it to us. Thank you so much, Roy. We travel to the interior of Alaska to Rampart, where students there are discovering new things and big adventures. We have all that plus much more. And we'll have Gary Fife with native news across the nation right after these messages. Alaska Kuberi got a new Nernak Nunak Hirani, a new Pilwe Lingarate Mangak Takun, a new Nernak Sikarnak Sivluni, Sikarna Lipayak Lugo, Saval Rotiningar, a new non Pilwe Lingaranun, Savak Pata, Elisarumak Pata, Pirar Negugalo Arle, Lismaf Sau Kuben Koko Ralugo Una, eight hundred seven seven zero zero one three eight. Heartbeat Alaska is brought to you in part by the Chugach Alaska Corporation, a corporation committed to profitability, celebrating its heritage and ownership of its lands. Chugach Alaska Corporation, assisting in operating the Job Corps Center in Palmer, Alaska, and recruiting students statewide, working to better the lives of all Alaskans. There's a I'd like to welcome a new sponsor to Heartbeat Alaska. Chugach Alaska Corporation has come on board, and I'm very, very glad of that. Nothing like giving support to Native News. Even the little guy, if you've got a small business, give me a call. There's no reason why you couldn't put a commercial on and get the word out all over Alaska about your business. Isn't that a great idea? Here's Gary Fife with Native News Across the Nation. This is Native News Across the Nation. I'm Gary Fife. U.S. Energy Secretary Hazel O'Leary has met with officials of the Yakima Tribe in western Washington to discuss pending issues while the federal government cleans up the Hanford Nuclear Reservation. Last month, while speaking with tribal leaders, O'Leary heard the concerns of tribal members about the issues of land returns, tribal involvement in environmental cleanups, the reclassification of Energy Department documents concerning the reservation, plus new health studies. Yakima Chairman Jerry Maninik says it's hard to believe that the nation which unlocked the secret of the atom and placed astronauts on the moon cannot clean up the soil and water. 
Three members of the Seminole Tribe of Florida are in a legal battle with state officials because the state says they poached rare swamp plants. The three Seminole men were arrested when a state park ranger caught them with three bags of rare orchids and other rare species. But the three Seminoles say they are immune from prosecution on the state charge because they say they are members of the federally recognized Florida tribe. Defense attorneys are seeking to have those charges dismissed. The Muscogee Creek Nation of Oklahoma is asking for help from federal investigators to look into the possible embezzlement of $90,000 from an organization that's supposed to benefit members of the tribe. The two tribal smoke shop outlets provide financial support for the tribe's Old Mulgee Indian organization. Tribal leaders became concerned when the smoke shop treasurer kept forgetting to bring their financial records to council meetings. An outside bookkeeper found thousands of dollars in checks made out to smoke shop board members or their relatives and a number of cashier's checks that were unaccounted for. The treasurer and the smoke shop board members have all resigned. The successful native corporation, Cook Inlet Region Incorporated, Siri, has made a $200,000 grant to the Justice Center at the University of Alaska, Anchorage. The money will be used to analyze the impact of the state justice system on Alaska natives and to push for implementation of methods or alternatives that could be useful to natives. Center Director John Angel says the funds will go to find some answers as to why the phrase justice for all hasn't worked for Alaska natives or even why Alaska natives haven't worked for the justice system. The grant is the second made by Siri. The first was to fund the Native Justice Center, an agency established to advocate for Alaska Natives when they come into the justice system, either as offenders or as victims. The Justice Center's, uh, excuse me, the Siri President Roy Hundorf says Natives have too often failed to understand the legal system, and because of that, the legal system has not served them well when crimes were committed against them. The highly successful operations of the Mashantucket Pequot of Connecticut have been looked to as a model by other tribes interested in high-stakes gaming, and the Squaxin Island people of Washington have made a deal with the Connecticut tribe to learn how they do things. The deal extends both financial and technical expert expertise to the Washington tribe, while the Squaxin Island people are constructing their own gaming hall. And finally, a federal panel has been in Fairbanks, Alaska this week to look into medical studies conducted on Alaska Natives 40 years ago. The committee focused on the use of the radioactive drug iodine-131. A year ago, it was learned that more than 100 Natives from, from five villages were fed radioactive chemicals by U.S. military researchers as part of testing of human adaptability to cold Arctic conditions. Natives who served as guinea pigs did not know they were taking radioactive substances, but U.S. military scientists say natives knew what they were taking. This is Native News Across the Nation. For Heartbeat Alaska, I'm Gary Fife. Thanks, Gary. Let's travel now to the state of Washington. And while we're doing that, towards the end of the powwow that we'll be watching, compliments of videographer Roy Big Crane and SKC TV will be taking a look at powwows nationwide.
Alaskam ini pergi pelbagai dengan rakyat pekat itu ikayu tenik ini untuk kawin ilik kun. Sebelum itu pelbagai singa gait ikayu tiksa dengan ayam kawin ni. Sebelum itu ilu aktif luget mekhlak tu nun lo kat kengaran nun lo. Mekiru rakyat lo ak ikayu tiksa gait ini itu kanok lima ukiu kagal wak pata ini mikun ini unnya umar rakyat. Ilisi mafsaq kawin tamat kuno nak koko lalu tin eight hundred seven seven zero zero one three eight. We have always felt in harmony with the land. Chakome, tapiwa, the skumuk, ta tapiachu, kenok anesche, ma tapiwa, makaspumos, akum. Help the Soil Conservation Service help our earth. Call us today. We owe it to our children. Once again, thank you, Roy Big Crane, for that video in SKC TV out of Pablo, Montana. Every week, we'll be giving you a listing of powwows across the nation and Canada, compliments of a listing in news from Indian country. Let's travel now to interior Alaska, to Rampart, where learning the ropes takes on a whole new meaning. <laughs> No, this isn't Mexico. It's interior Alaska, Rampart to be exact. The adventure-based outdoor program at Rampart School this summer provided a summer camp experience for 89 students from the Yukon Flats villages of Circle, Fort Yukon, Birch Creek, Arctic Village, Beaver, Rampart, Venati, and Stevens Village. The camp program ran from June 6th through June 27th. Activities of the camp focused on ropes program games and challenging adventures such as climbing sheer walls and crossing swaying rope bridges. How was the crisscross? The goal. Fun. Was it fun? All right. Fun, yes, but instructive too. The goal of these activities is to foster cooperative group skills such as listening, communication, and assessing healthy versus unhealthy risks and just plain being brave. The camp is situated in beautiful interior Alaska, the perfect setting where students have fun and learn crafts and games and skills as well. Four adults accompanied the campers, learning the methods used in leading these special games to take back home to their villages. <laughs> This is only the second year of the camp. Last year's camp was such a success that word of mouth spread, and this year they were filled to capacity. The students stayed for one week each from each village, and they ranged from the first to the eighth grade. <laughs> Aside from the usual hot dogs and marshmallows, native foods were served at the camp, including moose and salmon and whitefish. Let's go ahead and take a look at how alcohol affects some of the other organs in our body. The Athabascan children of interior Alaska had the best of both worlds this summer, in education in a setting that made learning nothing but fun. I got three. Thank you so much all involved with sending me that video from Rampart, Alaska. I hope you enjoyed today's program. Join me again for another Heartbeat Alaska next week. If you have video, please call me at area code 907-272-8111, and we'll do our best to get your story on the air. For Heartbeat Alaska, I'm Jeannie Green. See you next week. Ah uh -huh.